Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Kotar 2. Now, we got a few errands we need to take care of on the Ebon Hawk before we head to our next location. First off, we need to initialize the control cluster. That's something. We're getting there. Soon we'll have HK-47 back. Hey, T3. Hmm. Well, let's see. List. Can you upgrade an item for me? Okay, nothing really we can talk with eight or T3 about of interest. Let's see if we can find where everyone else is here. I know Bauer do okay, I thought he would be in the engine room, not the case. I know Kreia is normally in one of these cargo pods. I think she's in this one. Yep, there she is. Yes. Have you come with questions? Wish to learn about lightsaber combat. Ooh. Very well. What is it that drives you? I want to build a lightsaber. Indeed. A Jedi tool and a Sith weapon. And why do you need such a thing? Do 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 do. To defend you and my allies. Then listen to me. There is much weight, much craving attached to such a tiny thing of light. A lightsaber, any weapon, only achieves worth in how it is wielded, in the effort in the struggle of one who holds it. Such a weapon does not make a Jedi or a Sith, and at times it makes them much, much less than they are. But how do I make one? The knowledge has already been imparted to you. Upon our journey, the pieces shall fall into place. Quite literally. Very well. What is it that drives you? Hmm. Can you teach me any lightsaber forms? The Jedi practice many forms, many styles of lightsaber combat. It is good to know them, but not to rely on them. You may have already felt the Shicho, the simplest of the forms return to you as your skill and perceptions have returned. Others may come with time, with experience. Okay, so right now we have Shicho and Makashi. Now both of those techniques we already have, so we don't need to know a whole lot about them. Very well. Uh, more about the force forms. Very well. Of which did you wish instruction? And yeah, we have no force forms currently. Ask, and I will answer. <laughs> What's wrong with your eyes? Hmm. Well, let's get some info here. Did you know Atris at all? I know her as much as I know any Jedi. If you have other questions, you may ask those, but on Atris, I can provide you no answers that you cannot find on your own. Oh, and we are... yeah, we don't have enough influence for any of this, really. We gained some light side points, though. That's good. Where are we on the light side? Pretty high, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, we're almost a paragon of goodness. Now... Baradur, there you are. Hello there, little remote. Beep boop. It's been a long time since the war. I'm surprised you're still functioning. Hey, General, are you alright? What are you talking about? You look like you've been standing too close to one of my shield generators. Hmm. Well, when one is in touch with the Force, it can manifest itself visibly. You know, I was inspired by your arm. I like that one. Whoa. Claws out today, aren't they? Now whose claws are out? Seriously, you don't look that way from spending extra time in the fresher. I've seen other Jedi. Not many, but a few will look like that. And I feel a little strange around you a little more in control 
calm, like I usually only get when I'm repairing something. Well, when one is in touch with the Force, it can manifest itself visibly. Was this something you wanted me for? Where did you pick up that remote, anyways? That old thing? I built him when I was a kid. Been following me around for years now, despite what I've done to try and chase him off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. That's his buddy. What does it do other than follow you around? He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. He's also good for singeing the pants of annoying techs. Which I'm sure he enjoys. I've been thinking about doing some other work on him, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I can help you with? Hmm. Okay, let's see. What are you doing in the first place, though? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space-worthy. Whoever made these repairs doesn't think like most mechanics. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape. Cool. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go... Ooh, don't want to leave Evan Hawk since we're in the middle of space. That would be a very quick episode. So let's go ahead and talk to Atten behind the wheel. You know, I noticed a glow before, but now... Now it's bright around you. You've come a long way since Paragus. And despite all we've been through, you seem a lot better for it. It's hard to explain, but even with everything that's happening, I feel at peace. It shows. It's kind of inspiring, to be honest. Anyway, just wanted to mention it. I think the others have noticed it, too. Oh, can we play Pazak with Adden? Alright, but I'm out of credits, so it's Republic Senate rules. Republic Senate rules? That's where we waste a lot of time trading cards and trying to beat each other. But in the end, nobody wins. Everybody loses, and nobody accomplishes anything. I like it's that. Stalemate, except the goal is to pass time until the audience gets bored and leaves. Very cool. Uh, let's play a practice match then. And he is going to eat me alive. I would imagine. I mean, this is kind of his his shtick. Ooh. Uh, let's stand. Oh, you win the set. Excellent. 19, huh? 15. 22. And 20. This would be a really cool game to actually have cards for. Like a real version of Pazak. And the set is tied. We both have two cards left. I just want to see what happens when we beat him. What he says. Provided we beat him. Ah! Um. You know what? We're going to go ahead and give him that one. We're two. We, got, we just need one more to win. And he used one of his cards to do that. Okay. There we go. And he has nothing to say about it. I don't know what it is, but you look... Okay. Alright, what did you want to know? Asking him some questions. Oh, alright, never mind. That's good. I can go ahead and move on to our next destination. Now we've got... Telos, oh wow. Onderon, Narshada, Dantooine, Korriban. Well, Narshada seems to be an interesting location for us because we have to find... Well, that's where we have the bounty out on us. So, yeah, let's go ahead and head to Narshada. Oh, I'll never get tired of that. Well, here we are. The Smuggler's Moon. It's the gaping maw of Nal Hutta. Swallowing all the cargo and spaceport thugs the galaxy has to offer. 
Mandalorians, mercenaries, war veterans, and pilots from the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War ended up on Nar Shaddaa, from all sides of the conflict. When the last war ended, there was no place left for them to go. Nar Shaddaa's a rough place and easy to get lost in. Or for someone to get lost. If we wanted to keep out of sight from the Sith for a while, you couldn't pick a better spot. Okay. How hard will it be to hide here? Shouldn't be too hard. There's so much traffic on Nar Shaddaa, finding anyone on the moon's surface is going to be hard. We're going to touch down in the refugee sector. There's a lot more traffic there, and it's harder for people to spot you coming in. Or find you once you arrive. You sound like you've been here before. Anyone flying the Star Lanes has docked on Nar Shaddaa at least once. I wouldn't want to live there, and I doubt anyone does by choice. Now, if you don't know what Nar Shaddaa is, think of Coruscant from the prequel trilogy, only in the underworld. It's it's a it's a huge. The moon is covered in a city, but it's all run down and. I, I yeah, it's just yeah, I love Nar Shaddaa. I think it's a great area. How hard would it be to find a Jedi here? It won't be easy. There's so much traffic on Nar Shaddaa. Finding anyone on the moon's surface is going to be hard. We're going to touch down in the refugee sector. There's a lot more traffic there, and it's harder for people. Okay, I think we are good. So, let's take the Ebon Hawk in for a landing. I've plotted a course for the refugee sector, and we should touch down within the hour. Once we're down, we should finally be able to breathe easy. There's no way anyone's going to find us here. Famous last words. So there's... Yeah, this is Nar Shaddaa. It, As you can see, very similar to Coruscant. But it looks a little bit darker, a little bit rougher. Makes sense, though. It's controlled by the huts. However, it looks pretty good considering the fact this is, uh, like 3,000 years before the Galactic Civil War. That's a cool looking ship. Ah. Twi'lex and Gand, Wookie, Aduro, and HK fifties. Perhaps you have heard that the Jedi comes to Nar Shaddaa. While she walks upon the smuggler's moon, she is not to be harmed. Observe her, track her, but do not eclipse her movements. Or I shall eclipse yours. Why must we watch? We've hounded them so long. Now we have to wait? You must, because one Jedi attracts others. It is the way of things. Godo's head is filled with madness. Jug family hunt the galaxy and look for Jedi. The Jedi finally comes here and we can no longer hunt? There's no sense to it. If you wish to live, you should respect Goto's wishes. The beautiful Jedi has run for years. She'll not stay on the moon forever. Yeah, let the Zugs to fight Goto. After I've collected their bounty, I'll keep their heads as trophies. You best leave threats unspoken, Hanar. You were carried far from World of Trees. Maybe too far. I hear you've not even collected a life debt from the little red-maned female human. She makes a fool of you twice. You across Zugs, she would be very dead now. Go to or not, I will carve a bloody swath through your entire family, Zug. I swear it to you. If Goto's vessel is no longer neutral ground, inform us so that we might initiate assassination protocols and commence firing at once. <laughs> it would be unwise to commit violence here. Goto's order was clear. We are not to harm the beautiful Jedi while she walks on Nar Shaddaa. I like the Gan don't say anything. Unless we are attacked first, we're permitted to defend ourselves. Observation. Jedi follow the self-destructive path of pacifism and tolerance. They will not attack first. This Jedi is different. Godo told us to leave the Jedi alone, it is true. But he said nothing of the Jedi's companions. 
The plot thickens. Ah, the beautiful stench and decay of desperate living. This moon, it teems with life. It is difficult to center oneself. Welcome to Nar Shada. Towering buildings kilometers high and miles deep, with canyons so wide you could have a dogfight in them. Word of warning, watch where you step, or you'll fall for hours. Are we going to be okay on this landing pad? Sure. Most of the landing pads around here are unclaimed. Or should be. They're pretty badly maintained, so they're not safe to land on. Well, I mean, not this one. But they all have the reputation, so we should be alright. I think. Okay. Is this the refugee sector? Yeah. In all its glory. Don't get your hopes up from what you see here, though. As soon as we hit the main sector, that's when the smell and the mobs can get pretty bad. Well, let's get going then. All right then, let's move out. Uh, where are we headed exactly? It does not matter where we go. If what we seek is here, we shall come upon it in due time. Uh, yeah, if you want to stay on the ship and meditate some more, don't let us stop you. Whatever we do, I say we get the Hawk's ID signature changed while we're here. Might keep us from being a target when we enter a new system. What is it you wish to do? That's actually really smart. Hmm. Well, let's see where our path takes us. All right, if you have any questions, just ask. We should be able to leave the ship here as long as we want. No one supervises these landing pads anymore. You! You there! Uh-oh. What's with you? Letting that piece of junk sink its thrust into my landing pad! Wow! Toydarian, I, for didn't, I forgot that there was one in this game. Hmm. Is there some kind of problem? The problem is, you are on my landing pad. I got another ship coming in, and unless you want that piece of junk's hull crushed flat, you better move it. Got it? What other ship? That's none of your business. All you need to know is that they're gonna be firing up their quad lasers if they find your ship squatting there when they arrive. Hmm. I can pay for the space and your time. You couldn't afford it even if I was interested. Now clear that wreck waiting to happen off my landing pad. Okay. Let's just say... Let's go ahead and try Persuade slash Lie. The Huts told me I could land here. I don't want to have the exchange brought in. Yeah, and the Huts told me one day I'd own all of Nalhata. Looks like we both been told wrong. Now, either get that piece of junk off my piece of junk, or you're going for a two kilometer walk to the ground. Wow, we are uh, getting to that point where we have to be mean. You're lucky my ship's gracing your trash heap. Huh? My trash heap? Hmm. Fine. Land there. My trash heap's all that's keeping your ship from making the final plunge. And trust me, it won't be long in coming, I promise you. I got some visitors booked for your space. But I'm sure the two of you can work it out when they arrive. Works for me. Now, we definitely want Atten, and let's go ahead and grab T3. We haven't had T3 come along with us in a while, and they're such a loving couple anyway. And we gain dark side points. Well, bah. Now, we need to go ahead and get you all tricked out, T3. Because we have a ton of gear for you. So give me one sec, guys, and I'll get him all hot-rotted out. Alright, T3 is a computer-hacking, death-wielding machine. I like that. So... Was there anything around the ship that we needed to... No, I don't see any barrels or anything. So let's go ahead and check out the sights here of beautiful Narshida. Hi. You wander too far, human. We warn you what happened, but your kind not listen. That's a weak way. That's a Trandoshan. Break legs. Maybe you not wander off. 
You can't keep us trapped in the refugee sector. We can't survive there. You've got us locked in. Know your place, human. Your place is there, not here. Yeah. Another human? What you look at? Oh, I love how Trandoshan sound. What's going on here? Exchange business, human. Not for your scene unless you want to lose your eyes. Hmm. I won't let you hurt that man. Stand away from him. One human? Not an amusing fight. More than one human? A little better. Spill more blood. Alright. So. We're getting right into it. Once again. Actually, let's do cancel combat. Let's rock out some battle meditation. And then we shall utilize all the things. Now, Atten, I want you to focus on this guy with a lot of your sniper shots. T3. While I'm while we're busy all right, everyone got their. Everyone know their business. Just say, say the word. Let's keep it going. Now I don't have any heals because Kreia's not here. Time to even the odds. There we are. Okay, refugee has been rescued. Hello. Oh, remains. Always gotta check remains. We had some credits. Thanks for your help. They would have crippled me for sure. Well, I couldn't stand by and let them hurt you. Why were they hunting you? Well, they work for the Exchange. For a Quarren named Visquis. He's looking to step up in the Exchange. The only language the Exchange respects is money. So Visquis is trying to increase his profits by using the refugees here in Nar Shadda as a cheap labor force. We're only good to him as slaves and merchandise. He wants to keep us in one place, so he can control us. That's always been the way. Well, except lately. What do you mean? The exchange has been clamping down on the refugee sector hard, and I've no idea why. They've started kidnapping people, hurting others, but there seems to be no reason to it. So where can I find this Visquis? <laughs> you don't. He comes to you. If he's got reason to. Either because you can help him out, or because you're making trouble. Either way, it's not a good thing. Well, I was glad to help. You better head out before you run into any more trouble. Whatever your reasons, thanks. Hmm, just gotta get those light side points, man. To make up for those dark side points we got earlier. Ooh. Alright. <laughs> we got the beam shooting straight out. Spare a few credits, friend. Hmm. Of course. Here, take five credits. Much appreciated, friend. Life's hard in the refugee sector, and this should go a long way to helping. I'd like some information. Uh, all right. I don't know much beyond the refugee sector here, but I can share what I know. Do you know someone named Zezkai L? No, should I? He doesn't sound like a hut. What, is he a bounty hunter or an exchange boss? Tell me about the refugee sector. This sector's filled with refugees from the Jedi Civil War, and even as far back as the Mandalorian Wars. Refugees and war veterans both, and anyone else who was rendered homeless by the war. The Jedi destroyed planets across the galaxy, and here's where the wreckage ended up. If the Jedi didn't do this, the Sith did. That's two names for one thing. It's difficult to tell in the crossfire, and the Sith were led by Jedi. In the end, it didn't make much difference. Wow. Why are all the refugees here? A lot of space lanes cross at Nar Shaddaa, and once here, it's hard to move on. Even fighter pilots from the war can't get work at the docks. The freighter crews are full up. There's no work here, and no way out. Unless you want to become a hired muscle for the exchange, or work in a hut slave camp. So this is the end of the line for a lot of people. Look, one other thing. It's obvious you're new around here. I can tell it just by looking at you. 
My clothes are clean. can be a rough place and easy to get lost in. If you want, I can keep an ear out for you. Let you know if I hear anything. Hmm. I'd appreciate that. I'll do that then. I'll come seek you out if I hear anything I think you might want to know. Okay, that was five credits well spent. I saw what you did to those exchange thugs, stranger. Can you spare a few credits, maybe help another refugee in need? Sure. Take another five credits. Thank you, stranger. I won't forget your kindness. Why did you do such a thing? Such kindnesses will mean nothing. His path is set. Giving him what he has not earned is like pouring sand into his hands. Hmm. Nothing's set. As long as there's hope, there's a chance for redemption every day. And would that be a kindness? What if by surviving another day, he brings a greater darkness upon another? Hmm. And what if he doesn't? The Force binds all things. The slightest push, the smallest touch, sends echoes throughout life. Even an act of kindness may have more severe repercussions than you know or can see. By giving him something he has not earned, perhaps all you have helped him become is a target. Oh, he's about to get jumped for his five credits. Seeing another elevated often brings the eyes of others who suffer. And perhaps in the end, all you have wrought is more pain. And that is my lesson to you. Be careful of charity and kindness, lest you do more harm with open hands than with a clenched fist. Interesting. Look, I'm never going to stop trying to help others. Very well, but mind what I have said. Use your power, but in its proper place. And more influence lost with Kreia. Not that we really had any to begin with. Kreia reminds me a lot of Joris Kaboth from the Thrawn trilogy. Just a little less psycho. Well, here's a machine shot. Ooh. And what did she want? Not much. Just answers to some questions. Really? Interesting. Are we being sold out? Hey. Haven't heard anything more yet. I'll come seek you out if I do. Let me ask you some questions here, sir. Uh, all right. Ah, we don't have anything. Hmm. All right. Well, things are definitely sinister here in this place, but it makes sense since it is a hut, a, a hut planet. But I will go ahead and end the episode here, guys, and we will continue exploring Narshada proper. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.